All right, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rechak Wadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. And peace and salutations to the Akim and to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing this truth out in faith and sincerity. I and Brother Shemarala from the GMS Houston camp, you know, this basically is going to be a part two to the lesson that I did, you know, the called Yahweh Shai is a threat to the rulers, you know, of this world. All right, and that is truth, right? Because like I stated that when Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, was born, all right, whom you even call Jesus Christ, when he was born, you know, Herod, he realized how, how much of a threat that Yahweh Shai was, right? That his life, all right, his, his, his whole existence, because if you read it out of the scriptures, uh, the scriptures say that everything was put under Yahweh Shai. Right? That Yahweh Shai was going to get a kingdom that was going to never be destroyed, you know. So, everybody that was, he was really a threat to everybody that was ruling at that time. Even at that time, he he was, he didn't come to to destroy the Roman Empire. Right? He came to be that sacrifice. He came as a lamb. Right, but this time he's returning. You know, he's returning to take down these different rulers of these different nations today, these different kings, you know, uh basically like the elite, right? The Rothschilds, you know, all of them, right? He's coming back to take everybody out of power. Cause now it is time for him to get his kingdom. Now it is time for him to be king. Right? Because he did he came as that lamb already, right? But you read in, um, I believe it's Isaiah the 47th chapter, says, I will not meet thee as a man. He's coming back in a more glorified body, right? He ain't coming back to sacrifice himself no more. He's coming back for war, right? So, like I said, now it is time. And the scriptures say when Yahweh Shah returns, he's going to have many crowns on his head, and and that's the scripture that I want to start off start off with, right? This is a uh, Revelation nineteen eleven. It says, "And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse." Which is talking about the uh, chariot, because white represents purity, and the horse represents power, right? It's, it's describing a chariot, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he do he doeth judge and make war. And this is talking about the Lord Yahweh Shai, right? And what's the proof? It says his his eyes was a flame of fire. You can read about that in Revelation, the first chapter, 13 on down. It's describing the appearance of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. It says, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. It says on his head were many crowns. That, now, does that mean that he's going to have crowns on top of crowns, stacked on top of his head, you know, trying to balance them out? Nah, he it just it's it's symbolic, right? That he's gonna take down everybody that's in power, everybody that's in so called rulership, right? Have a uh, great authority in this place. He's gonna take all of them down. Right? Because what does the scripture say? This is uh first Corinthians fifteen and twenty four. Then come at the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the most high, even the father, right? Wh whose name is Yahweh. When he shall have put down all rule and all authority and all power. So that's this is what the the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, right? This is what he is coming back to do, to put down all authority, all power, right? And he's not just coming back with himself. You know, you read about Revelation, read it in Revelation, the... Uh, yeah, 19, like if I kept going, if you keep reading, it's going to say that he came with the thousands of heaven. The thousands of heaven followed him. You know? And I might just go back and uh, continue reading on that. But it says, for he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. So he's coming back to put all enemies under him. Right? And how he's going to do that? Through war. The scripture said through... 
And back in Revelation 19, it says, In righteousness he does judge and make war. That is what he's coming back to do. He said, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he had put all things under his feet. All right, so the Most High put all things under Yahweh Shah. You know, so anybody other than him is under him. Basically, if that, if that's if that was a confusing, right? Any other spirit that that's created, all right, is under Yahweh Shah. It says, "For he had put all things under his feet." But when he said, "All things are put under him." It is manifested that it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him, right? Because the Most High put all things under Yahweh Shah, but he didn't put himself under Yahweh Shah, right? And uh, right, like I was going into earlier, you know, Yahweh Shah, does, does the scriptures say, you know, that the, the Yahweh Shah is going to set up a kingdom, he's going to rule a kingdom that was going to never end, right? And his kingdom was never going to be destroyed, right? And that the kingdom that was going to set up, that's going to be set up, he said he's going to break in pieces these other kingdoms. Roughly paraphrasing, but I'll just get it, you know. I don't want to mess up the scripture. It's Daniel 2 and 44. And in the days of these kings, the, shall the, the most out of heaven set up a kingdom. So during this time, this this this, this period all right, uh, of, of rulership or period of time right now, the most side is going to set up a kingdom, right? Which is already starting, right? With this knowledge, Luke 17, I believe, right? The Yahweh said that the, that the kingdom of heaven is within you, all right? It's already starting from when you see these uh, different camps, you know, all around the world. But then Yahweh is going to bring that physical kingdom, right? When he, when he put down these different heathen nations. But it says... And in the days of these kings shall the most high heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Right? Meaning that only the Israelites are going to be ruling this kingdom. Are only going to be rulers. Right? There ain't going to be no other nations ruling with us. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So any other nation that is standing, that is, that is in so-called power, right, is going to be put down. Right, it's it's gonna be over for them. Like their time of ruling is gonna be over, right? Because only Israel is gonna be on top. You know, and this is talking about our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah, whom He even called Jesus Christ. This is talking about His kingdom, right? Because what's the proof? This is Daniel seven and thirteen. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Right, the Son of Man. That is talking about. So called Jesus Christ, right? Yahweh Shah. Proof. Precept is uh, Acts 7 and 55. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, is going to Stephen, right? When he was about to basically die. It says, Look up steadfast, steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of the Most High in Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of the Most High, right? He said, he seen Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand side of the Most High. And said, behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Most High. So that's talking about the Messiah. When you, hear, when you, when you uh, see Son of Man. All right. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. Right. Ancient of days is talking about Yahweh, right? Because Messiah has no end or he has no beginning. Nobody to create the Most High. Daniel 7 and 14, and they was giving him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, right? All people are going to serve him. All these heathen nations are going to serve him, right? Everybody's going to serve our Lord. Everybody's going to follow our ways. They're going to follow our laws. Isaiah 2 and 1. We're going to have to teach these. Isaiah 2 and 1 on down. We're going to have to teach these nations, right, how to be righteous. They're going to cleave unto our ways, right? But we're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments within us. We're going to be perfect. We're going to be a perfect nation. It says, His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away in His kingdom 
that which shall not be destroyed. So the Yahweh is gonna set up a kingdom that will never go down. Right? Never. That's why when he was born, you know, people felt threatened by him. Because they were like people calling him the king, this and that. Seeing him doing all these miracles. They were like, oh, damn. You know, we got to do something about this dude, man. This is Luke 1 and 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And shall call his name Yahweh Shai. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And you can read about this uh, this same um, account, basically, for lack of better words. In 2 Samuel 7, which is basically saying the same thing, going to the same thing. And the Lord power, the Lord Yahweh, shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. All right, so his kingdom, his dominion. His rulership is going to be forever, right, with no end. All right, so Yahweh Shah, he's coming back to take what's his, you know. And, you know, that's that's really it was it, you know. So with that, you know, I'm going to give praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, B'Hashem, Yahweh Shah, B'Hashem, Rechakadash, and give double honors to the apostles, the elders of the great millstone, peace and salutations to the Akim and to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth and faith and sincerity. Shalom.